All right, in this example, we're going to be talking about double angle identities. And we have a couple formulas for this. Um, so sine of 2a equals this formula, tangent of 2a equals this formula, and cosine of 2a actually has three different versions because uh, you have cosine squared minus sine squared. And so if you could wanted to, you can use some of the Pythagorean triples and sub out sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared and then combine it together and get this one. Or you can take cosine squared and sub it out with 1 minus sine squared to get this one. So we got two different examples. Uh, one of them is we are given some original angle and we want to figure out what sine of 2 theta is, cosine of 2 theta, and tangent of 2 theta. So what we need to do is draw a picture, figure out all of our pieces, and then we're just going to plug things into the appropriate formulas. So picture is going to be uh, the biggest piece that we need here. So for our picture, um, we're going to draw Uh, let's see. So cosine is positive and sine is negative. So it's cosine being positive and sine being negative is going to be down in the fourth quadrant. So we draw our original triangle and our formulas, everything in here is based on our original angle. So our original angle is theta and we're going to label this appropriately. So cosine is 3 over 5. So adjacent over hypotenuse, and that makes this a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but we're going down. So that is everything that we need. So if we do sine of 2 theta, we're just going to plug things into the formula. So it's going to be 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. So that is 2 times sine of theta, which is negative 4 fifths, and cosine of theta is 3 fifths. All right, so if we multiply all that together, we are getting 12 times 2, so a negative 24 20 fifths. So that is our sine of 2 theta. Now, we didn't know what the angle was at all. We just knew they were in the fourth quadrant, so we're somewhere between 270 and 360 degrees, and if we double it, it gets us some other quadrant um, that's going to give us a negative value. So... It kind of narrows it down to wherever that value doubles, it's going to double it into one of these two quadrants. But um, again, when you do sines and cosines specifically, you need to make sure that your range stays with, within from negative 1 to positive 1 is what your output should be. So that just fits. All right, and then we'll do cosine 2 theta. Um, so we could pick any one we want, really does not matter. So let's say we just take this one. So cosine squared, so that's going to be 3 fifths um, theta minus sine squared theta. So that's going to be 3 fifths squared minus sine of theta, which we already did up here. So that's a negative 4 fifths squared. And again, this should add up to something between a negative 1 and a 1 it's cosine so we get 9 20 fifths minus 16 20 fifths is going to equal a negative 7 20 fifths all right and then we'll do tangent tangent of 2 theta is 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. So tangent of theta is negative 4 thirds. So it's going to be 2 times negative 4 thirds over 1 minus negative 4 thirds squared. So that's going to be a negative 8 thirds divided by, um, this is going to be 16 ninths, so minus 16 ninths, and I'm going to make the 1 9 ninths so we can put those together. So we have a negative 8 thirds, and 9 minus 16 is a negative 7 ninths. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, negative 8 thirds times a negative 9 sevenths. Negative and the negative will cancel. The 3 and the 9 can simplify, so we get a positive 24 sevenths. 
All right, so that's our first example. Our second example is gonna kind of build off of this, um, that I'm gonna need these formulas to kind of figure it out, because this time we have the double angle, so we actually have this value equal to 4 fifths, and we need to try to figure out what sine, cosine, and tangent of the original ones are. Now it does give us a hint that this theta is in quadrant two, so I would like to draw some sort of a triangle, um, but it's not 4 fifths because the double angle is 4 fifths, so I can't use those values. So what I got to use, unfortunately, is some sort of a formula, um, and I got to pick one of the three to kind of work with. So I have cosine of 2 theta, so I have that value of 4 fifths. And then I'm going to be setting it equal to one of them. Um, and it doesn't matter which one. Uh, I, I wouldn't pick this one because that's going to technically be two variables, so I'd be picking one of these. Um, let's just say we do that one. So that's going to be um, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So we're looking to solve for cosine of theta, and then if we know cosine of theta, that means we have our fraction to start to apply all of our values, and then we have everything we need. So we're going to try to get everything by itself, so we're going to add 1. So if we're adding 1, we're actually adding 5 fifths to that side. So that's going to get us a 9 fifths. It's going to be equal to cosine squared theta. Uh, we'll divide by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by a half, just to make it cleaner on that side. So then that's going to get us 9 tenths equals cosine squared theta. We're going to square root. And that's going to get us a uh, square to 9, which is a 3. Can't square root the 10. Uh, but technically, we have a plus minus here. So that's the tricky part. So the tricky part is, should this be a positive or should this be a negative? Well, it's cosine. So cosine in this quadrant is going to be negative. So we're looking at a negative 3 over root 10. So, because theta is the basic angle that we're looking to find. Right, not the double angle, but it's the actual angle. So I can now um, fill in my values. And so, well, oh, shouldn't need this anymore. Um, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And here's where the negative kind of comes in anyway. And then if you do Pythagorean theorem, that's going to get us a 1 for this, because it's going to be 10 minus 9. Um, and then we have everything we need. So sine of theta is going to be 1 over root 10, which we'll have to rationalize. So we multiply by root 10. So square root of 10 um, over 10. Cosine. We already had, actually. Um, so that's going to be a negative... 3 over root 10, we'll rationalize that, multiplying by root 10, so negative 3 root 10 over 10, and then tangent. Tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be a negative 1 third. Okay, and that was going backwards, where we had our double angle, we had to use a formula to figure out, and either you got to pick one that has either the sine or the cosine, wouldn't matter. Um, if we would have done the sine, we would have gotten this fraction. Uh, we would have had a positive on there, and then we would have figured out the, that that would have been a negative 3. So it really wouldn't matter. Just don't pick the one that has both sines and cosines. It doesn't allow you to solve for it very easily. So, and then our original problem was uh, we had an original theta. It allowed us to create our fraction, or allowed us to create our picture. Once we have our picture, we literally are just plugging it into the formulas. All right, and that is a little bit of double angle identities.